Hey guys, this video is gonna be some simple steps on how you can improve your angles on any montage. So I'm using Halo 5 or Halo as an example. A lot of people will get a shot like this where the camera is just dollying in one direction. You can see it here. It's not a bad angle, but it doesn't have a lot going on. So yeah, it's, there's not much going on. So the first step is to add parallax. So I have a video already talking about parallax and you can click the video here. If not, I'll just do a quick rundown. So basically I'm just gonna take the same angle but I'm gonna have something moving in front of the screen here. There already was parallax in that later one I showed you here, because parallax is when things are moving independent of each other, which only happens when the camera is moving. So if your camera is stationary and panning, it won't happen. But here you can see when I move here, this foreground piece should move faster than that background piece. You'll see it moves a further distance across the screen while this one will stick more around here. Just as an example, you can see how much more moves. So what we want to play off that is, but we want to add a foreground piece. Example again, adding this foreground piece, it makes it quite a bit faster moving across the screen, making it more dynamic. And anything that's more dynamic is more interesting. So example here, same shot. You may wouldn't want something as bulky because it kind of takes away from it, but this is just an example here. Another way to make the shot more dynamic is to control how the camera moves so it's not as linear. So like an example here, instead of just moving right to left, kind of looking like a, the camera's on a track, this one, the camera is going to do like a, a circle rotation. So it's going to move through the scene forward and sideways at the same time, making the shot again more dynamic and interesting. Example here, it kind of goes around the pylon or the pillar, which reveals the background. Parallax in the front, your parallax in the back. But instead of just going beside it, we're going around it. So the shot becomes instantly more interesting. All right, the next step I like to take is to add a depth of field to the shot. So in-game cinematics, at least in Halo, have no depth of field, meaning everything is in focus. So what we want to do is fake the camera focus, adding a depth of field to this shot. So my goal for this one is going to be, we're going to focus on the background, and then the camera is going to change its focus from the background to foreground. So we have an interesting shot here that has the camera already moving nicely. The first step is I duplicate the layer and decide how many levels I want to it. Do I want mid-ground, foreground, and background? And for this one, I'm just gonna do two, so like a mid-ground background. What I do then, as you can see, is I made a rough mask on what I think should be the background. So it's all of these chunks here. Now, it's a very terrible mask for this example. As you can see, it moves not the way it should, but I just wanna show you how easy this is to do. So the regular shot just looks like this. But once I've masked out my background here, masked out the background. So in my mask, I went to a feathering of 115, just because I don't want a hard line between background and uh, foreground. And then I'm going to look up camera lens blur in the effects and put it onto both clips. Now on both clips, I'm going to click on repeating, uh, repeat edge pixels. That's very important for both of these. You see it automatically does a five. But let's go part way in and let's click on the background one and put it to zero because we want our focus to be on the background and add a keyframe right here. We're going to do the same with the foreground. So the foreground, I want more out of focus. So I'm going to do like a 15 here. So it looks like the foreground is out of focus there while the background's in focus. So it looks like the camera is looking up there. And then what I'm going to do is a rack focus, which I've already done a tutorial on in more detail about how to do depth of field here. You can click on it or click on the link in the description. But as a quick rundown, all I'm going to do is bring up both of my key bindings on these. So I have my blur key bindings both here, where one's just at 15, which is the background piece, or sorry, is the foreground piece, and one's at zero, which is the background piece. Then I'm gonna go a little ways in, and I'm gonna reverse it, where I'm gonna have now my foreground in focus, so I put that to zero, and my background to say a little stronger than before, so we'll go 20. And it'll look like now that the foreground piece is in focus and the background is out of focus, and we had the camera ramp to that. So let me load it just to show you what it looks like. So background to foreground, rack focus. So it just makes it look a little more professional and I would even maybe ease up a bit on the blur, but also shows you that that terrible mask I did even worked with this example using like a, a feathering on the edges of it. So the last step is another step I already made a video on, adding camera shake. So you can click on that video here if you want more details on how you can utilize it in different scenarios. So basically I'm gonna add a new layer, go layer, new adjustment layer. Now I'm gonna look for the effect wiggle position. So I just type in wig, you'll see wiggle position under behaviors. Place that on there, just ignore the black frame that's going around it. Let's make the speed at 0.5, because one's a little strong. And the amount, let's change it to 15. Now we're gonna grab the wiggle rotation just under position here, and it's gonna go crazy for a second. 
We're going to change the speed to 0.25. And we're going to change the amount to 3. Now to fix the black frame, because the actual entire image is moving a bit here, all we're going to do is type in transition. Or sorry, we're going to type in transform, which is under distort. Now normally you can do this on another adjustment layer, but I'm going to do it on the same one. And then at scale, I'm going to change 100 to 106. And that should hide any of the black like off frame around it. All right, now that's loaded, you can see it just makes the camera feel a little more organic. It's not that stiff movement of the, the theater mode in Halo anyways. So it feels like it's kind of handheld slightly and you got the rack focus. So combining all these things together, let's go over it again. We added parallax with a foreground object, which made it more dynamic. Then we made our camera movement itself more dynamic by instead of moving in a linear line, we had a kind of like a half circle, like it's going sideways and forward at the same time, combining two things. Then third, we added a quick and easy depth of field. Then fourth, we added a slight camera shake. And adding that all together gives you just a nice more, like a nicer professional looking shot. And it really makes it look like you're actually in there with a the camera and just adds to the entire thing. So hopefully this video helped you out. Um, check out my other ones if you want more detail and let me know what else you want to learn. I have a few more videos coming up soon. All right, thanks guys.